A year into the pandemic, we've gotten pretty familiar with online ordering, contactless delivery and curbside pickup. But this brave new world came with brazen new tactics when it comes to dining and dashing. How has this been manifesting? So somebody will place an online order from one of your restaurants. Yep. And then a few days later, we'll get a thing from our POS company saying a list of people. It's not just one or two, a list of these were all the people that are now contesting their credit card fee. Brian Ingram, the owner of several Twin Cities restaurants, including the Gnome and Hope Breakfast Bar, says people will order, take the food and then dispute the charge via their credit card companies to get a refund. For us, it's several times a week that it's happening. Um, and I think anybody that has online ordering now because our old protection used to be your credit card code when you would swipe your credit card and you had a chip. So that's how you could combat it. And now if you do online ordering, you're just manually entering that. So anybody that wants to contest it, we don't have your signature and we don't have that chip. If you want to contest it with your banks, you're going to win. Ingram says it's not just a couple of dollars on a couple of small orders either. All of us are like, gosh, I hope an office orders today. And then you get this great big order and now you're afraid. Is it, is it a real order or is, are we going to get a charge back on it? In fact, a restaurant in L.A. featured in this Eater article says a customer disputed a nearly $730 bill after having taken the food. Radio silence after that. Ingram says people who have legitimate issues with the food usually speak up. Most restaurants know if somebody doesn't like something, they call you, they send you something through Facebook or social media and say, hey, I didn't like my food, I didn't like my service. This isn't this. These are people that never reach out to you. These are folks that just call their credit card company. And most of the time, they've ordered more than what a normal person will order. The charges the restaurant then has to cover isn't just on the bill itself. But in the meantime, we eat it on the food, you eat it on the credit card on the front end, and then you have to pay a 3% processing fee to refund the money, and then you have to cover whatever your servers were tipped on. How are you feeling about all of this? I mean, it's it's super scary right now. Like we're, I think for us in Minnesota, we're trying to have optimism. The sun's out and hopefully we're going to get back into a patio season. But the hits keep coming and it's it's getting harder and harder to uh, deal with those. So this question might have occurred to you. Why not just go to the vendor to the vendor that they use for the credit transactions? Right. Why doesn't Brian just do that? Well, he said he did. He tried it, but was told they just don't have the technology available to keep track of patterns or repeat offenders in that way.